very much. And we're going to talk about accessibility today. Um, but first, I need to do a disclaimer. It's a pity that I am the last talk of the day, but this is for any other conference, any other day, and forever. So if you take a picture, please add the description, at least in Twitter. So it's just very funny to see tweets about how important is accessibility with no alt. So please don't do that. Um, and let me introduce myself as well. So my name is Adrian. Uh, I'm an accessibility software, accessibility software engineer at Miro. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows Miro or uses. Um, and you can find me under my surname and my name uh, in Twitter or my website. So I'm going to picture you a situation. So you are new in a company, and they give you time to take a look at the code base first. So you start taking a look at the code base, and then you start seeing things that are not really correct. So you, there are things that they are coming that doesn't feel good. So the senior developer comes and says, hey, what, what do you think about our code base? And say, well, the application is not very accessible, right? And they say, what, what's that? And then, OK, you breathe, say, OK. But do you realize that there is a lot of work to do? I'm going to picture another situation that is really based on a true story. So again, you have time to take a look at the code base. And then, yeah, what do you think about the code base? And the same. Well the application is not very accessible, right? And they can say something like, yeah, it's OK. We know our customers. They are not blind. <laughs> but you don't have enough knowledge yet to assess if it's correct or not. So maybe you say, well, I would need to trust him because he's the senior developer. He's been here for 10 years. So uh, he's not what's, what he's talking about. And yes, I'm using he because unfortunately that's, that's the case. And that is a problem. And it could lead to more problems. And the first one is maybe obvious. is the unawareness of the importance of web accessibility as well. Not only the importance, but to know what is web accessibility. I think we already uh, hear a lot about accessibility today from Ante and, and, and Eva. So that's one problem. The other problem could be the lack of knowledge and technical education. It could be that we don't know how to create accessible code. And this could be because there is not a lot of technical documentation out there in comparison with the huge amount of documentation that we have from JavaScript frameworks, uh, architecture, infrastructure, security, DevOps, etc. As well, it could be a budget issue. Your company maybe don't have, uh, or doesn't have the budget for an accessibility team, or they cannot make external audits, or they don't have resources like licenses or courses that they can pay. As well, the lack of inclusion of people with disabilities in development teams. We are not ready yet. We don't have the tools to, uh, for hiring processes and the communication tools to include people with disabilities in our teams. So those, those are the main problems that we can find when, we, when we're talking about web accessibility in projects. But maybe you can say, yeah, well, what can I do, right? So what I'm going to present today to you is just something that I've seen that it worked and is a sustainable strategy. So I'm going to focus in four main pillars. And the first one is planning, planning for the future. And you need to start from the personal commitment. You want to be the expert, the key, pe the, the key person to be the, uh, the, yeah, the accessibility expert of your project. So make a personal commitment, create your own KPI, set the deadline. By the end of the quarter, I would be able to fix issue, um, easy, fi easy issues on accessibility. I want to finish this course, etc. And important, transparency. Inform your team and your manager. And they need to know that you want to be the one who's taking the lead in accessibility. As well, analyze where are we now. The current situation could be with an initial audit. It doesn't need to be an external initial audit. We've seen AxCore and Eva, and we are going to talk about a bit other, other applications later. And involve people with disabilities from the beginning. 
a US, a UX uh, research and usability test, but it doesn't need to be organized. You can maybe ask in the internet if someone wants to test your application and then maybe you have an interview. That's, that doesn't need to be formal. It could be informal. And then you can find a lot of feedback from there and inform yourself about the legality. I mean, European Act is in, coming in 2025 and you need to be aware, you need to be aware what is the implications for your company. And as well, talk to your managers. And transparency. I, I always talk about transparency in 360. If your company allows it, make a public roadmap or at least the public progress. This is what we have achieved or this is what we want to work on in the next months. But have an external contact method. Leave your users, your customers, be able to contact you. And we already seen from Ante, like not only a phone, but an email in a written form, in a voice form, any other. As well, cultural change. And we always talk about education, but I think we need to include accessibility in our development processes. And this only can be done by changing our culture, our processes. Accessibility is everyone's responsibility. We need to have a transparent vertical, talk to your manager. If you're a manager, talk to your employees, but as well with your colleagues in a horizontal way and a transversal way, like talk to other teams, the design team, the uh, infrastructure team. It affects everyone. As well, search and create allies. We cannot be in this alone. You need to create a, a group of people that are with you. And maybe you can, do, you can um, do it with an accessibility champion program. An accessibility champion is a member of the product team. Doesn't need to, it doesn't matter if it's a dev, a PM, a designer. And they are applying principles within their team. And they can be a good connection within, with the accessibility team. And maybe you are the accessibility expert. As well, define rules standards and policies, very clear. An accessible MVP prototypes and first iterations. MVP is, there is a V and it's viable. And if it's not accessible, it's not viable. It's just minimum and it's a product. And the definition of done, it is not, if it's not accessible, it's not done. It's not done yet. As well, internal visibility, okay? So you have, uh, a communication channels, maybe Slack, maybe Microsoft Teams, whatever you're using, create one for talk to talk about accessibility. Inform the, the team, share articles, etc. But celebrate releases as well. Maybe you know that other team has fixed a lot of issues from an audit. Celebrate those releases and give and ask feedback to other teams. Hey, I am the accessibility expert. We are the accessibility team. How do you want us to collaborate with you? Is this, is this the way that you want? Do you want to have a, um, a meeting every week? Do, can we make a retro to see if we can polish the, the communication? Do you want us to fix the issues? Do you want us to tell you the issues and then you fix and then we review the pull request? Just ask for it, ask for feedback. As well, education and technical excellence. We talk about changing the culture and making this cultural change, but we want to be the best developers, the best engineers. We always want the, to, to, to be able to, to apply the best techniques and to, to, to have more knowledge. And the initial one, the basic one, are everything renders in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The other thing, the rest, is just pure grammar. You want to write your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in React, that's good. Angular, Python, uh, Django, it doesn't matter. This is grammar. This is the way that you write. Everything renders in those three, because those are the only languages that our browsers understand. And you need to understand what is the end result. Otherwise, you could be a very good React developer, but you're not a front-end developer. So let's, let's refresh our basis. You need to understand what is the W3C, what is semantic web, who is setting those standards that we are applying. And as well, yeah, use courses, conferences, doesn't need to be paid. There are a lot of free ones and we are in a conference, so attend if your company allows it to, you to do it or 
this conference is free if you're is in virtual way. So you're watching from home or YouTube later, then do it. And the community, just try to follow on Twitter, on any other platform, um, people who are sharing the knowledge about the topic that you want, in this case, accessibility. Quick wins. There is a scale on effort versus impact, and we want to look for the, the minimum effort for the biggest impact. So I want to tell you about the most common WCAG failures in one million websites. And surprisingly, or non-surprisingly, the, 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 the six most, most common failures has been the same for the last five years. So let's make a game here. And the last one, we have missing document language. Okay, so language is the attribute that you need to put in the HTML tag, and that allows the screen readers to adapt the grammar set to read the website in a correct way. We have empty buttons. Empty buttons can be a floppy disk. That there is a button with an icon. There's no text. So maybe we want to add an ARIA label to give more context. The next one is missing form input labels. Remember, placeholders are not labels. Every input in every form should have a label visible. And if it doesn't have a label, a visible label, then it needs to have an ARIA label. So it needs to be an, it needs to have an accessible name. Empty links. The typical empty links are the link to your Twitter profile, which is just the icon of Twitter. The link to your Instagram account, that is only the Instagram logo. Those are empty links who has no content. Again, an ARIA label to give more context about it. Missing alt text for images. We are not describing the images that we put in the website. It doesn't matter as well in the website, in web apps, uh, social network, etc. Instagram, Twitter, any other uh, social network have um, the ability to add descriptions to the web, to the images. I, I already made the disclaimer before. Use it, because otherwise you're going to make a tweet to say, look how cool is that. For someone who is blind, then that means nothing. So this one. And I will let you figure out what is the top one uh, most common error. Anyone want to guess? Uh, maybe shout a bit more. Anyone? Color? Color contrast. 80, almost 85% of all websites, and this is done in 1 million, but it's a good amount. Almost 85% of all websites have contrast problems. It is very easy. You just need to compare two colors. There is a lot of um, um, engines, comparison websites that you can use. Uh, this survey is done by WebAIM, and WebAIM has their own one. You just need to put the two, tech, the two colors, and they will give you a radio. And even they will give you a green tick or a red cross. Just go <laughs> with, the re with the green tick. And the contrast is the contrast between the text and the background where the text is going to be located, for example, a button. So the background of the button and the color of the text. So those are very quick wins that we can, we can apply. It's very low impact. It's a very low uh, effort with a high impact. And it could be a couple of lines of code. And share your knowledge. Again, I'm going again with transparency. Use this accessibility channel to share the knowledge that you have articles, etc. Or maybe you have a front-end guild and you want to make a talk about it. Or internal events. Maybe you want to do an internal meetup only to talk about accessibility or front-end. And create a post or a video if your company has a tech blog or your own blog or only internally in your wiki, just create the documentation. So the one who's going to come after you, they can read what you have researched, what you have found, and then they can take up from there. As well, we need to have a good observability and alerting system. 
So it's very important that we test with manual and simulation tests. And what do I mean with manual and simulation tests? For example, we have external things, like this is a pair of glasses that simulates visual deficiencies. And yeah, you can see that you don't find the focus or the button that is not clickable with the keyboard and you're starting to get angry and then at the end you're very angry because you cannot use the website. So you use screen readers to hear what it is in the screen, or you use only the tab key. You don't, you don't want, uh, you, some people don't use the mouse. So try to navigate you only using your keyboard. Or maybe you want to use extensions in the browser. Uh, we see a lot of simulations for uh, color deficiencies or just visual deficiencies. And external simulators, like those pair of glasses that I've seen before. As well, automate tests, unit tests, and end-to-end -end tests. Uh, Eva saw AxCore. I will give you a bit more. P11Y is another good engine. Use linters. There is uh, Ax linter for accessibility, inter linter for uh, TSLint and ESLint. Do your unit tests and do end-to-end -end tests and include them into the URC ICD. With this one, we are going to avoid putting inaccessible code in production. We are going to be, we, we are going to be able to stop it there. And if you have it uh, in GitHub with GitHub Actions, for example, you can see them directly in your pull requests. It's very, very easy. I talk about testing web accessibility before in a talk, and I wrote about it in my blog. So if you want to take a look, just be free and, and give it a look. And as well, the three A's. Right? We found errors, well, that's good, but we need to study them. Let's assess them, let's analyze them, and let's act about it. But always take decisions based on the results. You want to be able to say how many images of your website has alt or not, that's good. But we need to analyze as well the quality of the description of the images. And based on the results, we can say, okay, we want to improve, we are happy with the result, etc. And document it. Again, for someone who's coming after we, afterwards, some work is already done. And that's very, very beneficial. And share the results. We're already talking about the accessibility channel, the front-end guild. Make a talk about the testing phase, the, the applications that you're using in your CI CD, and yeah, document it. So those are the four pillars that I've seen that it worked, in, at least in the teams that I've been working on. And I think it's a very good starting point to build, maybe not an accessibility team, but an accessibility culture, strategy. And from there, you can always build on top. So before, I was talking about a situation where you are new in a company and then you find out that the application, the website is not accessible. And then your other colleagues, your developer, the, your colleague developer say, well, either I don't know what that is or we know our, our, our users. So it's pretty much an awareness and denying. So let me picture the ideal situation. So again, you arrive to the company, but you are already six months, one year in the company. And then your colleague said, well, thank you for your pull request. Improving the accessibility of the product is very cool. Now we have a very good VPAD that we can publish. We share already the documentation in, for, within the team. We make uh, posts about it. That's very cool. And then you can even go a bit farther, like, I'm glad, and I added unit tests and end-to-end -end tests uh, with Axe and PL and Y, and I added to, CI, to our CI CD, so we can be sure, 100% sure, that the code that we produce is not going to production, and we are going to capture within our processes. And then, well, your colleagues say, yeah, that's great. 
why don't you prepare a talk? Why don't you share about it uh, with us? We are very excited about it. And we have a front-end guild meeting next week, so share with us. Maybe you want to say, yeah, again, I'm going to go further. And I was actually thinking of writing a blog post or a call for paper for a talk in a conference and share it with the community. So like this, we have included the cultural change in our colleagues. We have the education, education and tech excellence because we are the one doing it. But a pull request, apart from being a request, is as well a method to learn from your colleagues. We are transparency. We, we are sharing it within the team and thinking about writing a blog post in the community. So you are as well putting yourself visible for the rest of the community. And as well, we have a good system in CICD. We create the unit test. We have end-to-end uh, -end tests. And we know how to read those tests. We know how to read those uh, results create documentation and act based on those facts. And this is because accessibility is not a feature. It, it cannot be a feature and it will never be. We cannot treat it as a post process because I've always remembered that uh, one of the software architects that I, that I work with, the, 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 he always used a sentence called later never happens. And we are very, very often say, yeah, we will do it later. But trust me, later never happens. And it doesn't cost more time. It's going to take you 10 seconds to write an ARIA label, 10 seconds to uh, put a role in an element. So try to include accessibility in your um, development process. But it's some, there is something that we always forget and not only forget that we sometimes we have the misconception and is we don't develop digital products for the companies that we work for. We develop them for other humans. The company that we work for is only a channel to arrive to those humans. So let's use them. Let's work for them. But think about the end user. Since we don't know our users, and if someone said you know your users is wrong because you never know who's going to use your application, maybe I'm showing it to a friend, maybe I'm using it with my family, you don't know your users. And since you don't know them, the only way that you have to create a quality product is creating a product for everyone. And if you start thinking on the end human that is going to use your application and you put yourself in the skin and the shoes of someone else, and then you're starting to create that cultural change as well in yourself. And we, we, are, we are going in the, in the good direction. And that's it. <laughs>